In the aldol reaction, two equivalents of a ketone or aldehyde unite to form a beta-hydroxy carbonyl-containing compound. The reaction proceeds with acid or base catalysis and involves the formation of a new carbon-carbon bond. The reaction is called the aldol reaction because the product contains an aldehyde or ketone and an alcohol. The aldol reaction itself is freely reversible. So sometimes the beta hydroxy aldehyde or ketone is dehydrated through heating. The loss of water drives the reaction due to the accompanying increase in entropy. And this variation is referred to as the aldol condensation because a small molecule, in this case water, is lost. The aldol condensation yields an alpha-beta unsaturated compound. An acid-catalyzed aldol reaction begins with tautomerization. And in acid, tautomerization involves protonation of the carbonyl oxygen, followed by loss of a proton from the alpha carbon. The result is the enol form of the original substrate. This enol is nucleophilic at the alpha carbon and can therefore attack another molecule of aldehyde or ketone that has been protonated and is therefore quite electrophilic. This installs the new carbon-carbon bond. The oxonium ion then merely sheds a proton to the medium, resulting in the neutral aldol product. The reaction can halt at this stage, or if it is heated, dehydration can follow. Dehydration occurs through protonation of the hydroxyl group. The good leaving group, water, then dissociates as a proton is lost from the alpha carbon. This results in the formation of the alpha-beta unsaturation. the dehydration results in an increase in entropy because the original aldol product, a single molecule, has been broken into two fragments, the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde and water. The base catalyzed aldol reaction begins with the removal of a proton from the alpha position by hydroxide and electrons can flow toward the carbonyl oxygen to show the enolate in its more stable resonance form. The alpha position of a ketone or aldehyde has a pKa of approximately 20, whereas water has a pKa a bit above 15. Consequently, when hydroxide is used as the base, only a small amount of the ketone or aldehyde is deprotonated. Most of the substrate remains in its original form. Therefore, attack of the enolate on one of the many unreacted molecules of ketone or aldehyde generates the new carbon-carbon bond. The alkoxide formed in this process removes a proton from water to yield the neutral aldol product. When the reaction is heated, the aldol product is dehydrated. Hydroxide removes a proton from the alpha carbon, and a carbon-carbon pi bond is formed as hydroxide is expelled as a leaving group. Although we do not usually consider hydroxide to be a suitable leaving group, this dehydration simply trades one hydroxide ion for another. 
while simultaneously increasing the entropy of the system through fragmentation of the aldol product into two molecules, the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde and water. It's worth noting that both the acid and base catalyzed aldol reactions are merely examples of nucleophilic addition to a ketone or aldehyde. We saw many examples of this in the videos on the reactions of aldehydes and ketones. The only difference is that now a new nucleophile, which is either the enol or the enolate, is being used. Now let's turn our attention to some specific examples. In the example below, 3-pentanone undergoes base catalyzed aldol reaction with heating to yield an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. Notice that although two equivalents of 3-pentanone are consumed to yield a single molecule of the aldol product, the stoichiometry is not always written. The reaction begins with the deprotonation of a small amount of 3-pentanone by hydroxide. Since the molecule is symmetrical, it does not matter which alpha carbon is deprotonated to form the enolate. The enolate that we formed in the previous mechanistic step now attacks an unreacted molecule of 3-pentanone pushing the carbonyl pi electrons onto oxygen. In this way, the new carbon-carbon bond is generated, and the alkoxide intermediate simply removes a proton from water to yield the aldol product. When heated, deprotonation of the alpha position by hydroxide forms the new carbon-carbon pi bond as hydroxide dissociates from the beta carbon. The alpha-beta unsaturated ketone results as the final reaction product. So far we have only considered self-condensation reactions, but crossed or mixed aldol reactions are also possible. In a crossed aldol reaction, two different reactants are used. However, in order to avoid product mixtures, it is common to select one substrate that has no alpha protons. This simplifies the reaction because that substrate cannot form the enol or enolate. Here's an example of a crossed aldol reaction in which propionaldehyde condenses with benzaldehyde. Notice that benzaldehyde has no alpha protons, so it cannot form the enol in this reaction. Only propionaldehyde can form the enol. So the reaction begins with the tautomerization of the enolizable aldehyde. That is, the aldehyde that does have alpha protons and can therefore form an enol. This process begins with protonation of the carbonyl oxygen, which is followed by loss of an alpha proton so as to form the enol tautomer. The enol then attacks a protonated molecule of benzaldehyde, pushing the carbonyl pi electrons onto oxygen to neutralize its charge. Loss of a proton from the resultant oxonium ion completes the formation of the aldol product. And when the reaction is heated, dehydration follows. This occurs when the beta hydroxyl group is protonated and water then dissociates as an alpha proton is also lost. The final aldol condensation product is therefore the alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde.
it is also possible to perform intramolecular aldol reactions, which yield rings. In the following example, 2,5-hexadione undergoes intramolecular aldol condensation in base to yield a cyclopentenone product. The reaction begins with the deprotonation of an alpha carbon. The molecule is symmetrical, so there are only two types of alpha carbons to be considered. The alpha methyl group is five atoms away from the other carbonyl, while the alpha methylene group is only three atoms away from the other carbonyl. Given that five-membered rings are less strained than three-membered rings, we would expect this freely reversible process to favor the formation of a five-membered ring. Therefore, while the alpha methylene can be deprotonated, it is the loss of a proton from the alpha methyl group that is of greater interest in explaining the formation of product. The enolate that was formed through deprotonation now attacks the electrophilic carbonyl carbon to which it is tethered. This not only installs a new carbon-carbon bond, but also generates a ring. And the alkoxide then removes a proton from water to afford the cyclic aldol product. When heated, the aldol product is dehydrated via removal of an alpha proton which leads ultimately to the dissociation of hydroxide as the new carbon-carbon pi bond is formed. In summary, ketones or aldehydes with alpha protons can self-condense via the aldol reaction to yield products with a beta hydroxyl group. The reaction requires acid or base catalysis. When the reaction is heated, it is referred to as the aldol condensation because water is lost in the process of forming the alpha-beta unsaturated product. Crossed aldol reaction or condensation is also possible, but the substrates must be carefully chosen to avoid product mixtures. Typically, one substrate lacks alpha protons which prevents it from enolizing and acting as a nucleophile. Additionally, intramolecular aldol reaction or condensation is also possible when a reactant with two carbonyls is employed. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.